Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of our John Bradfield series. I'm Mike, and this is Sydney History. John Job Crew Bradfield was an engineering genius who left his mark on the city of Sydney in the early 20th century. His leading roles in iconic projects like the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the city's underground railway has firmly cemented his place in history as the father of modern Sydney. But who was the man behind the engineering legend? John Job Crew Bradfield was born on December the 26th, 1867, in Sandgate, Queensland. Schooled in Ipswich, Bradfield later went on to study at the University of Sydney, where he completed a bachelor's degree of engineering in 1889. After graduating, John returned to Queensland and worked as a draftsman for the Queensland Railways. It was during this time he would marry Edith Jenkins, and they would go on to have six children, five boys and one girl. After being made redundant in 1891, John and Edith moved to New South Wales, where he returned to the University of Sydney and completed a master's degree in engineering in 1896. Bradfield also founded the University of Sydney's Engineering Society, where he served as president for two terms, first in 1902 to 1903, and then again in 1919 to 1920. In 1924, he would be awarded the University of Sydney's first ever doctorate in engineering for his thesis titled The City and Suburban Electric Railways and the Sydney Harbour Bridge, to cap off his academic achievements. Bradfield would go on to have a long career with the New South Wales Department of Public Works, stretching from 1891 to 1933. Before moving on to major transportation projects, he also worked on the Cataract and Burrinjuk Dam projects in New South Wales. In 1913, John would go on to be appointed to the role of Chief Engineer for the Sydney Metropolitan Railways. It was at this time he submitted his grand three-part transportation plan for the City of Sydney. The plan would go on to shape Sydney as we know it today, and it included the electrification of the Sydney Suburban Railways, the City Underground Railway Loop, and the construction of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Construction on the Underground City Circle would start in 1922, with the contract for the Sydney Harbour Bridge signed a year later. John Bradfield would personally oversee the construction of both mega-projects, which ushered in a decade of construction chaos, the likes of which the city of Sydney had never seen before, or has never seen since in the almost 100 years since completion. By 1932, Bradfield's vision had become a reality, with the opening of Town Hall and Wynyard Stations, along with the Sydney Harbour Bridge. However, the city's circle wouldn't be completed within Bradfield's lifetime. With the city's harbour-facing station Circular Quay opening in 1956, 12 years after his death. With his lifetime's vision now a reality, Bradfield retired from the New South Wales Department of Public Works in 1933. He would go on to be a consultant for the Brisbane Story Bridge, which was a counter-lever design similar to what he first proposed for the Sydney Harbour Bridge. In 1938 he would go on to release a plan for another visionary project this time based on a massive water diversion and irrigation plan, designed to increase food production and generate hydroelectricity for the northern region of Queensland on a similar scale as the Snowy Mountains River Scheme in New South Wales. John Bradfield died at home in the northern Sydney suburb of Gordon on September 23, 1943. A memorial service was held at St Andrew's Cathedral and he's buried at St John's Anglican Church Cemetery in Gordon, New South Wales. Bradfield's lifetime of work has earned him many accolades and honours, such as receiving the Telford Gold Medal, awarded by the British Institute of Civil Engineers, and the Peter Nicol Russell Medal from the Institute of Engineers Australia. Commuters in both Sydney and Brisbane will also know that two major, albeit very short, city highways were named after him, as well as a federal electorate north of Sydney. In more recent times, a new high-tech city has been named after him, Bradfield is destined to become the third largest CBD in the Sydney metropolitan area when completed, and it's to be located in the new Western Sydney Airport precinct, scheduled to be opened in the later half of the 2020s. The city of Bradfield will host industries devoted to advanced manufacturing and science and technologies. There you have it, everyone. That was a brief look into the life of John Bradfield, the father of modern Sydney, and a person who dared to dream and build engineering marvels on a scale like no other Australian before him. Do you think John Bradfield earned the title as the father of modern Sydney? Or maybe you think there's someone else out there that's more deserving? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below, where you can also find links to other videos in our John Bradfield series. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing or supporting us on Patreon. And remember, history's full of surprises. I'm Mike, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.